In this video, I'm gonna show you how to automate your outreach in 2025. Because while most people are manually sending, you know, 10 to 20 emails per day, I've built a process that sends 10,000. And it's helped me book over 2,000 sales calls in the last 12 months. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do the same. From the tools you'll need to the automated follow-ups to everything in between. This way, you can start booking sales calls without manually sending cold emails. Now, the first step of automating your cold email outreach is gonna be finding a tool that you can actually send from. Because you can't just use your normal Microsoft or Google account. Not only would it be impossible to automate the process, but without the tools that these sending sequencers have, you'd almost immediately land in the spam folder. So we'll use a platform where you can send at scale, manage multiple accounts, and keep your messages out of the spam folder. And there are a few different options you can choose from. So the first one here is Smartlead, and we actually used this one for like a year, year and a half. And it was great, you know, easy to use, tons of different automations, tons of features, tons of things that you can leverage to really get a good result from like an experience perspective. Um, you know, super easy to automate everything within the platform um, and an all around powerhouse. But the one con that we found with the platform while we were using it is just that because there were so many updates, you know, there was constant up and down time. Um, and then on top of that, and I'll mention this in a sec, but the actual sending reputation of this tool, similar to most mass market tools, is not isolated, which means that you share reputation with all of the other people using the platform. You know, you share their warm up pool and the pros and cons that come with that. The next one is instantly, and I would say this is the most like user friendly option that's out there. Very like simple, you know, the user interface has nothing but what you need, and they really try and dumb it down to the essentials so that someone who's just getting started can really jump in and tackle this. They've come a long way in the last, like even six months, I would say, offering a lot of things like done for you inboxes um, and just generally improving the experience to keep up with the market. Um, but again, I would say this is very similar to Smartlead in the sense that, you know, they're constantly shipping updates, shared reputation, and just little things like that that ended up pushing us away from the platform. And then lastly, there's Email Bison. So Email Bison is actually the tool that we're using right now. And the best way to describe email bison is essentially the PC compared to the Mac. The Mac being, you know, smart lead instantly where they're very user friendly, um, you know, made for the entry level user. This is made for the power user. There is an application to be able to become a user in the first place. They're very specific about the people that are using their platform. And that's because this one has a isolated reputation uh, for the infrastructure and that's one of the main reasons why we started using it you know you do not share reputation with any of the other users on the platform and therefore you end up getting better deliverability you know your emails land in the primary more frequently and we've seen better reply rates because of that on top of that you can pretty much accomplish anything with its api like it really is a platform that you're able to build off of and we've built our entire business off of this through automations in Airtable and N8N and Slack and so on and so forth. It really does just allow you to make the platform whatever it is that you want. And then lastly, when it comes to pricing, it is on the pricier side, but if you're an agency like ourselves where you have a ton of different clients, the price actually becomes more worthwhile because of how many clients that we have. With Smartlead and Instantly, there's a cost per client and they charge you per number of leads and things like that in the sequencer, which is fine for the normal like individual user. But as soon as you stack clients and you're really trying to build something at scale, this becomes the go-to. Now that you have your sending tool, we need to set up the infrastructure. See, to send thousands of emails per day, you need to have more than one email account. Because obviously if you send thousands of emails from one email account, you'd be immediately marked as spam by Google and Outlook. But on the flip side, when you send, you know, 10 to 15 emails per email account per day, it ends up looking pretty organic, like almost like it's coming from somebody at an internal organization. So now we need to buy domains, create email accounts and warm them up so they're ready for sending. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to set it all up. So let's say you wanna send 10,000 emails per day. So 10,000 emails per day is the goal. And you want a split of both Google inboxes and Microsoft inboxes. With the providers that we use, Google inboxes, let's say you can send 15 cents per account. Microsoft inboxes, five cents per account. With the platform that we end up using, each order of these ends up being 100 accounts for Google and 99 accounts for Microsoft. So in the end, so each order of Google ends up being 1500 cents 
and then each order of Microsoft ends up being 495. So for easy math, let's say we're gonna do three, three orders of Google equals 4,500 cents. And that leaves us with 6,500 necessary. And then for Microsoft, if we wanna fill in the last 6,500 cents, so not necessarily 50-50, but you know, 65, 45, we would need 13 orders of Microsoft. And the nice thing is Microsoft, they're a little bit cheaper um, and you need less domains. So it becomes a little bit more favorable to do almost like a 60-40 through Microsoft and Google while still maintaining, um, you know, that mitigated risk across platforms. And then again, for domains, if you wanna do 13 orders of Microsoft, you're gonna need 13 domains. And then with Google, you're actually gonna need one domain per three sending accounts. So let's call that 100 domains. So in total, we're gonna need around 113. When it comes to domains, you're gonna to wanna to purchase them from Porkbun, uh, which is a domain registrar. There are obviously other options out there, but this is the one we've always used, always has some really good pricing. Um, and just keeps everything organized by keeping it all in one platform. Once you jump in, you're gonna wanna buy your 113 domains. To make it easy to come up with the naming conventions, we usually use ChatGPT to generate these names. So what I'll do is run a quick prompt. All right, cool. So I've inserted the prompt here. Essentially, what we're gonna be doing is asking it to come up with 113 domain names using um, our company name. We want them to prioritize suffixes on the tail end of the word, one to three letters. We can even say one to four. Um, feel free to use things like co, LLC, Inc, etc. We want these to look like actual domains. And then I said, don't use any country phrases. I've seen that a lot or words that are unrecognizable to the average person. Again, we want it to look like it could be an actual company domain. Don't want any numbers. Awesome. Once you have your domains, you're going to bring them back in a pork bun, go into the bulk buy domains and you're gonna drop those in there, do a quick search. All right, perfect, so they've started loading into Porkbun. As you can see, they're automatically adding to my cart and you're just gonna keep pulling them over until you get to the number that you want. You can see here that I use .info domains. There's tons of different ways you can go about doing this. I'd always recommend using .co, .com, or .info. .com is always gonna be the best, but it's also the most expensive, like almost three times this cost. .co usually goes on sale for a similar cost, so I'd use those when they're cheap. They're usually the second best. And then .info, usually the cheapest cost, but also the worst when it comes to like the overall reputation. And then lastly, you're gonna wanna buy your email accounts. And I'll just show you real quick. If you purchase your email accounts from a, a typical um, you know, Microsoft or Google provider, you're gonna be paying roughly $8 per inbox. Um, whereas with the alternatives, if you jump into something like premium inboxes, you're gonna be closer to like 350, which is less than half the price. So again, when you're setting up your inboxes, I'd go with something like premium inboxes if you wanna buy it on the individual level. Zapmail, which is actually what we're using right now, which is $300 per 100 mailboxes, which is $3 per as well, a um, little bit cheaper. And then also Mailer if you wanna do uh, Microsoft or your Outlook accounts. So these end up being fairly cheap, around $90 per domain per month, which is essentially $90 per those 500 cents per day. The nice thing with those resellers is that they'll automatically take care of all the DCAM, DMARC, you know, SPF records and so on that you need to land in the primary inbox and have, you know, effective deliverability. And then they'll also automatically add the email sending accounts into your sequencer. So in this case here, you can see they've uploaded my accounts into the sequencer. And then the next step is going to be warming them up. Most providers will actually start this warm up process for you. You can see here with Outlook, I am sending five warm up emails per day. And we started these on the 23rd of October and they're now at 38 warm up emails sent total. You're essentially gonna to wanna to let this run for two weeks before doing any sending on any of the accounts. The warm up requirements will also be a little bit different for Google and you're gonna to wanna to just listen to the provider suggestions, but they'll probably be closer to 15 cents per day on the Google accounts for a warm up. But again, always that two week warm up period. Now, setting this all up is already a lot of work. And if you don't do it the right way, there's a really good chance that you're gonna burn all of your domains before you even get to start sending. So if you want us to install this entire system for you, you can book a call below. We've done the same thing for TripAdvisors and we booked them 47 calls in just 45 days. So again, if you wanna see if we can help you out, just book a call below. But either way, having all the accounts set up is just the beginning because now you obviously need to get all of your leads and then launch these automated campaigns. Now. The first thing you'll have to do is export a list from a platform like Apollo. And if you don't know how to do that, you can watch the video on my channel showing you exactly how. Then we'll need to upload that list into our sending tool. Once you've scraped your list, you can pull it into a tool like Clay. If you wanna clean it up, just make sure everything's verified. Like you can see here, we pulled in our list. We verified it using Million Verifier here. We only took the emails that were deliverable. So, you know, this double checks to see if when you send an email to 
the person's contact, if it's gonna bounce back or if it's actually gonna be deliverable. If it is deliverable, then we'll send to it. And then we also ran a few other things like um, you know, AI enrichments just to pull the specific company's industry and things like that, just to improve the performance of the campaign. But essentially, you just wanna make sure you have all your fields mapped, you know, everything that you wanna use, and then you can just simply go to export, download a CSV, and boom. Once you have your CSV, you're gonna to wanna to create a campaign. For us, all of our campaigns follow this structure. So we'll do company name. You know, we handle a lot of clients. We need to make sure we know which company it's for. The industry, so this one in particular was lenders. Um, and then you can either do something descriptive, like, you know, if it's specifically companies that are 10 to 50 employees or, you know, a specific region or different things like that. So I'll say like 10 to 50 employees. And then the last thing I always like to include is the date. So today is November 2nd and then we'll create. And then from here, we're obviously gonna upload our CSV. You wanna map the fields, make sure everything is set properly. We don't want this, don't want this. We do want the client's industry, don't want this. Perfect, so you're just gonna wanna double check that all these are mapped correctly. You have all the things that you want and then you're gonna finish mapping. You'll probably want to name this list and then you're gonna wanna choose how it's gonna handle existing leads. So generally I like to update existing leads and we don't want parallel sending. So the leads can only exist in one campaign at a time. All right, so then you're obviously gonna to wanna to paste in your email copy, including your subject line and the actual emails itself. So it could be for subject line, for example, it can be whatever you want really. We'll just do FYI first name, that's a simple tried and true. Um, and then when it comes to the email, you know, you're obviously gonna have this pre-written, but maybe in this case, something like first name, are you looking for new clients to provide loans to this quarter. Perfect, so I just wrote that really quick. Obviously that's not gonna be your email copy. You're gonna to wanna to prepare something a little bit more established, but that's the rough idea. You know, you're gonna include your first name variables, your email signature, and any personalizations that you decide to use. Then you're gonna to wanna to jump in, add your time windows. You know, we usually do 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. EST. You're gonna set up your settings, always send us plain text. You know, we're doing 10,000 emails per day, so you're gonna to wanna to send that. And do not track opens. Sender emails, you're gonna to wanna to set up all of the sender emails that you set up. So we'll add those. And then from there, you're pretty much just gonna to wanna to do a quick check, preview to make sure everything came through. You know, you can see here the personalization came through. There's an issue with the email sending signature, so we can see if this is a, yeah, there we go. It's just a few of the emails. So obviously, you wanna double check things like these, make sure it's all good prior to actually launching. If you're also setting up your campaigns, I'd recommend setting up a bunch of split tests, you know, different CTAs, different variations of the offer. When you're first starting out, obviously you wanna make sure that these split tests are very high impact. Um, so not just like tiny little word tweaks, but actually like major differences especially if it's your first campaign, you know, do three to four variants, totally different angles and see which one performs well. After you see which one performs well, that's when you can get into all of like the hyper optimization, but stick with the broader uh, perspective from now. And then you can add email steps as well. So, you know, if you want your email too, that could just be something along the lines of, you know, also, you know, first name, I forgot to mention that we do this all on a performance basis and you only pay if we get results. Happy to send a quick vid showing you what this could look like. So again, this isn't actually what I would write and this is not what I'd suggest you write, but the essence is there, you know, add something to the second email that you didn't include in the first, maybe try a different CTA, something a little bit less um, friction, you know, like a video, or whatnot if your first email was a book call CTA and then go from there. And you can you know draw it out, but I usually wouldn't recommend sending more than two to three steps per campaign. Now, at this point, your campaigns are all set up and ready to start sending, which means you'll obviously start to get some replies, but not everybody is gonna book into your calendar right away. And that's exactly why automated follow-up sequences are so important. They pretty much let you follow up on time delays so that you're not manually trying to keep up with every single person that showed interest at one point in time, which obviously allows you to make the most out of your lead list without having to do everything manually. So I just put together a quick bare bones um, meeting request subsequence, which is essentially the subsequence that you'd put someone in after they respond that they're interested in a meeting. Um, you know, you're gonna wanna have subsequences or automated follow-ups for each 
response type that you receive. So if what someone responds to, you know, an email around a free video or free sales asset or something along those lines, you're going to want the subsequence to be associated with whatever it is that they actually said that they're interested in. You know, if someone says they're interested in a sales asset that you're offering or a lead magnet, you're not going to want to send them the next follow up sequence saying like, hey, are you ready to, to book a call and just keep pushing that? You're going to want to ensure that they consumed the thing that you provided to them. But in this case, we're just going to do a straightforward meeting request subsequence um, and I'll share just like a standard bare bones structure that you can try. Um, the one thing that I will say is you always want to take a value based approach with a lot of these things. You don't want to do any of the like, hey, just bumping this up, you know, just following up. How's it going? Like, are you interested in this? Like, that's all pestering. That's annoying. You want to provide value um, and just generally see if there's something that you can add to the conversation to help them realize that it's the right decision. Maybe it's a better time, so on and so forth. So. This is just kind of like a standard following up type sequence, but essentially what it's gonna do is say, just checking back to see if you're still interested in the chat. I can reshare my link here if you're up for it. Um, you know, just wanna make sure this doesn't slip through the cracks. Maybe we can find time in the next few days. Um, you know, it looks like you may have gotten caught, caught up. If creating a system to generate new business opportunities is still a priority, let me know. Again, these are all like kind of like the bare bones, but I would recommend, you know, maybe using the first email to provide value, like share an asset, share a video explaining more. And the next one, maybe share a case study and just build off of that momentum as you kind of go through to gain their trust and really just like prove to them that it's a worthwhile opportunity. And this follow-up sequence is essentially gonna be set up as a, a normal campaign. So um, in Email Bison specifically, you'd choose subsequence. The leads are obviously gonna be pushed automatically from your inbox. Sequence set up normally, schedule, same thing settings, same thing. Now, at this point, you know exactly how to automate your cold outreach, but without the right strategy behind everything, you'll still struggle to get results. So if you wanna see the exact strategy that we use to book our client 45 calls in just 45 days, you can check this video out and I'll see you there.